Well, hi, I'm Cody Sandall, and when I was growing up, I was a bit of a perfectionist. And in fact, when I was in high school, I was tired of having sin in my life. So uh, being a, a systematic person, I came up with a rational and orderly approach to eradicating sin in my life. Now, my plan was to have a calendar and list the days of the week at the top, and then down the left-hand side, list my common sins. And so I would you know, plot how many times I committed that sin on that day, and then get it down to zero by Saturday. Saturday, and then I can dust off from that one, move on to the next. And just rinse and repeat this process, and in a few short weeks, I would have no more sin in my life. What could go wrong? So I started with lying, and you know, marked it down, you know, three times on Sunday, and, and twice on Monday, and eight times on Tuesday, so on and so forth, got it down to zero by Saturday. Moved on to the next, which was lust. Once on Sunday, once on Monday, three times on Tuesday, because it's always worse on Tuesday, got it down to zero by Saturday. Fantastic. Except I noticed a problem. Every single time that I changed weeks, moved on to the next sin, that previous sin, the one I had down at zero just the day before, always crept back in. So I could kind of suppress like one sin at a time, although even then probably I was deceiving myself, but I could never keep all of them at bay. So with that context, maybe you understand why I believe that Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, saved me from my perfectionist self, which says, It is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. You know, I would really like to be perfect. That would be great. That'd be fantastic. But this text reminds me that even if I could somehow get there, that's not how I'm saved. I am saved by Jesus, and, and that's enough. That's enough. And so I can take that, that sin calendar, crumple it up, and throw it out, along with all the judgment and shame that it represents, because God loves me for who I am today. God doesn't just love me for who I might be someday several weeks from now. Do you still feel like you have to earn God's love? Do you feel like you have to be perfect or God's going to start hurling lightning bolts at you? As you read this second chapter of Ephesians, I encourage you to receive the gift of God's love. Receive the gift of God's forgiveness. Receive the gift of God's grace. Enjoy chapter 2.